Hi, and welcome to this video on UiPath with me, Yebe. This is a beginner's video, so if you are a very experienced uh, developer, maybe you should check out some of my other videos, but before you move on, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you're new to development, this is a good place to start. We're talking about variables and their scopes, and also at how to pass arguments. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm inside the studio. I've built the skeleton of a very, very simple process. It's called calculator. I have a sequence called calculator, and inside that sequence, I have another sequence called data input, and another one called calculation, and that's for calculating some stuff. In this first section, we want the user to input a couple of numbers, and then in the second one, we'll add those two numbers. And that's a very simple, very useless process, but it'll serve to illustrate what scopes are and how to take advantage of variables and scopes. So I'll use the input dialog in my data input section here, and I'll call the title of it calculator, and the input label will be please enter the first number, and I'll make a copy of this, and that will then be please enter the second number. Now these two input dialogs need somewhere to store the number that we input. And for that, we'll use variables. So the last property down here that we haven't really talked about is the value entered. And that is the value that the user enter. Where should that be stored? Now, in the bottom here, we have three panes, imports, arguments, and variables. And in the variables pane, we can create a new variable. And we'll just call this one first number. We can choose the data type of it. This is a string or a text data type. We don't want that. We want a numeric data type. So we'll choose int32, which is an integer. Now we can, in the value entered field, we can enter the name of that variable. And that means that when a user is shown this dialog and enters a number and clicks OK, then that number is stored in this variable. So for the second input dialog, we can do the same thing, except we're not going to create the variable down here in the, the variables pane. We can just click in this field, right click, and click create variables. Or we could have just entered control K but we'll click create variable and we'll call this one second number. And as soon as I hit enter, a new variable is created down here, but we need to note that this is created as a string variable. So we'll change the data type. And that means that now we have somewhere to store both our numbers. And if we run the automation, we can see that it asks us to enter the first number and the second number, and then nothing happens. So what we want to do now is we want to add those two numbers, and we'll do that in the calculation section. What we'll do is we'll create a new variable called result, and that will also be of type int32. And then we'll use the assign activity to assign to that result variable the sum of the first number and the second number. And as you can see, that's no good. And why is that? We just created two variables. Well, if we click this sequence here, or this scope, we can see that the only variable we can see is the result variable. And in the same way, if we click the data input sequence, we can only see the first number and second number variables, but not the result variable. And that's because variables have a scope. And what scope means is, from where is this variable visible? So this variable called result is only visible inside the scope of this sequence called calculation. Now, we could increase the scope of our variable so that instead of just being visible inside of the calculation, it would be visible inside the calculator, meaning the outer sequence here. So doing that to the result variable is not really going to make any difference because the problem lies in the visibility of the first and second number variables. So if we go to the data input scope, and change the scope of first number and second number to be the calculator sequence. Then when we scroll down, we can see that the error has disappeared. And that's because now that the first and second number are in the outer scope here, that means they are also visible inside the calculation scope. And now we have all three variables visible in here. So the last thing we want to do is we just want to show a message box and we'll just show the result variable and we'll need to convert that to a string because it's a numeric type and we can't display that in a message box. So we'll run the process again. Enter the first number, two. Enter the second number, four. 
and we get a result of six. Everything is perfect. But this is a very, very simple automation. And just like scope and encapsulating, as they call it, variables within the tightest possible scope, the same really goes for functionality, such as the addition of these two numbers. You want to isolate that as much as possible, not only to make it easier to sort of get an overview of this process, but also for reuse. So if we look at the project, we only have one file in here. We have the main file. Now, this assign activity I could extract to be placed in its own file. If I right click it and select extract as workflow, we'll call this file add numbers and I'll click create. And we can see that now an add numbers file has been created over here and that file is displayed in our editor uh, window here. Now inside of this file, let's have a look at the variables. There are none. And why is that? Uh, because we need to add the numbers and we need the result. And uh, if the variables aren't visible, well, why are there no errors? How come the results and the first number and second number uh, don't cause this little blue icon that we saw in the first file? Well, that's because these variables have been converted, if you will, to arguments. And an argument is something you pass from one function to another, or from one file to another. And in this case, if we go back to the main file, we can now see that instead of the assign activity out here in the calculation sequence, we now have an activity called invoke add numbers workflow. And that's what happened when we chose to extract that activity as a separate file, is that it inserted this invoke workflow activity and then referred to that new file that it created. And what it did is it recognized that this assign activity took the first number and second number variables and assigned the sum of those two to the third variable, being our results variable. So what it recognized was that if we took the assign activity and extracted to another workflow, we needed to pass information about the numbers, both the input and the result, to that workflow. If we go back to the workflow here, we can see that we have these arguments. The result argument is an outgoing argument, meaning that it's going out of this file into something else. And the first number and the second number arguments are coming into this file from somewhere else. So now that it has these three arguments, it can assign the sum of the first number and second number arguments, not variables, but arguments to the result argument. Again, not the result variable, but the result argument. And that will then be passed back to the process that invoked this workflow. And in fact, if we look at this button called import arguments, we can see that when working with this add numbers file, three arguments are in play. And if we click the button, we can see that we have three arguments, result being an outgoing and first number and second number are incoming. And they are all of type integer. But then here we have values assigned to these three arguments. And the value of the result argument is actually the result variable. And the same goes for the first number argument and the same with the second one. This can be a little bit confusing. What I like to do is go into the called process and then change the name of these arguments to out for the outgoing arguments and in underscore for the incoming arguments. And what that will do is if we save it, and go back to the main file and now look at the import arguments button. Then we can see that this is the names of the arguments inside of the add numbers file. And over here, we can then say this needs the result variable value. And this needs the first number and second number. So this is a way of differentiating between the name that was generated when we just did the extract as workflow. So if I click OK now, we should be able to execute our workflow again. We'll enter the first number, we'll type in 4, we'll type in 8, and we'll get the result 12. And what it did is it ran through the main file, first asking for the first number, then asking for the second number, then sending those two numbers through these arguments into the add numbers file, where the two incoming arguments were added, assigned to the outgoing argument, returned to the main file, where it was assigned to the result variable and then displayed in the message box. So if you're a little bit confused, watch the video again and play with this stuff because it's really not that hard. One very important thing that I really get a lot of use from is make sure you name the arguments with the out and in 
And also if you use an argument that goes both in and out, I'll just call it in out underscore and then whatever name it has. It's really not that difficult once you get the hang of it and it's really, really useful. So that's really it for this time. And this was, again, as I said in the beginning, a video for beginners. So this stuff was basic. It is somewhat difficult to get a hang of when you're just getting started. But hopefully, if you are a beginner, then this helps you along the way. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.